Yesterday we said that on our broadcast that we want to talk about the God we worship. If we are going to be worshipers, it's very important that we know what we're worshiping or who we're worshiping. Uh, the God as he has revealed himself somewhat in nature and creation and more particularly, more fully in scripture. Uh, even as, uh, some have pointed out that, that we know about God through Jesus Christ. Christ said in John chapter 1, he's come to exegete or, or, or teach us what God is like. And he's the fullest representation of the Godhead that we could ever imagine. And so as we contemplate Jesus, uh, we are getting uh, great insights into what God is like. But what we know about Jesus is found in Scripture. We can't go beyond that and pick up something through history or tradition. Uh, what we know about Jesus and what Jesus has said is found in the Word, and the Word reveals to us what God is like. And so as we think about that, I, I uh, hesitate going too far because some months ago we went through a, a series on, on God himself. And we looked at many, many of his attributes and, and things that, uh, about him. So I don't want to go too far with that because we've already done that. At the same time, I want to make sure we're worshiping the true God and not a God of our imagination or a God of our whims, a God that we want, a God of our own creation, but uh, the God that is actually revealed in Scripture. So I'd like to, uh, to look at just three attributes uh, yet this week, and those attributes will be the omnis of God, and, and we'll start today with omniscience, and that is he knows all things. Uh, Dandy Hahn, in a wonderful book about uh, who God is, says all through the Bible, when God wanted to bless a people, he did it by finding worshipers. That's a good point. God wants worshipers to worship him properly and rightly, but also it's a great blessing for us. You know, we're going to become like that which we worship. Have you ever comprehended that or thought about that? We're going to become like what we worship. So if we worship a false deity, we become that kind of a false person. If we worship self, well, then we're wrapped up in the, the God of self. If we worship money, we become more and more like what money is and the greed that goes with it and so forth. And so we want to make sure we're worshiping the true God. And so we're looking at God's, uh, some of God's attributes. Remember, attributes are what he is fully and completely. Uh, we don't parcel that out. We don't divide that up. But these are, are uh, qualities in a sense, characteristics in a sense, but those words simply don't go far enough. So we often use the word attribute. God is fully holy, fully love, uh, fully mercy, all these kinds of things. And we can never be, he can, he can never be anything less. So let's look for just a moment today at omniscience. God is all wise. He knows all things. In Psalm 139, and I'm using the Legacy Standard Bible, O Yahweh, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down. They're intimately acquainted with, you're, you're, and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there's a word on my tongue, behold, O Yahweh, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before. You have put your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. What a wonderful section of scripture describing the fact that God knows us. God knows our past, everything about us. God knows our present. He knows what we're doing, what we're thinking. Even more than that, he knows what's actually going on inside our hearts that nobody else knows about. He knows what those, those thoughts in our, in our minds that we have carefully uh, guarded uh, against uh, being, uh, coming out and people seeing us for what we are. And sometimes those thoughts and, and feelings and so forth are even buried from ourselves because we don't want even ourselves to know what we're like to some degree. Well, if that's the case, uh, rest assured God already knows. You're not hiding anything from God because God knows our past and our present and he knows our future. He knows our destiny. He knows where we're headed. He knows what we'll be like in the future in ways that we cannot even possibly comprehend today. And so God is omniscient. He knows all things past, present, and future. In, in Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14, it says, Who has encompassed the spirit of Yahweh, or, or as his counselor has informed him? 
With whom did he take counsel, and who gave him understanding, and who taught him in the path of justice, and taught him knowledge, and made him know the way of understanding? Of course, the implied answer to all those great questions is that no one did. No one taught God. God doesn't learn. God doesn't grow in his knowledge. God doesn't get new insights. God is perfectly omniscient. He knows all things, past, present, and future, and uh, and he'll never grow in those things. That might sound very strange to us who are constantly in the process of, of growing or maybe diminishing in our knowledge, but God is not like us. And that's one of the things we need to comprehend. We are worshiping a God who's not like us. He is omniscient. How that ought to give us a wonderful day in the Lord.